Radio it is time now. You know, it, um, we often talk rugby and cricket and soccer on the show, and you know, often we come uh, come on here when we've won a test match or like we've done well in the cricket, and you kind of you know expect that to happen every now and again. It's very it's it's awesome though to suddenly stumble on a sport you've never watched before, uh, sit down and watch an entire race, and then see uh, to, to add to that, see a South African put in what I thought was an unbelievable performance at the Olympic Games. Uh, one of my favorite moments of the whole Olympics was uh, switching over to catch the mountain bike, uh, the mountain bike race. Um, wow. Seven Ks, eh, Barry? Yeah, the lap was, uh, I think it was four and a half Ks, so about 35 in total. I mean, seven laps, uh, th- yeah, 35 seven laps, Ks. Yeah. I had no idea it was that long, and I thought when you started hauling them in, I thought, okay, this must be kind of near the end. And uh, then they said, no, you're only halfway through at three and a half laps. I'm like, wow, this is a uh, this is a long race. But I've never watched mountain bike uh, competitive ra- uh, racing before. I thought it was thoroughly entertaining and enjoyable. And I can recommend that they put more of it on TV and they show more of it because what a race. What a, what a really, really cool event it was. Yeah, no, definitely. The guys in London did an awesome job to um, put our sport out there and, and advertise it. Uh, in a sort of, sort of a mainstream kind of way and I think the the bodies that be have also sort of structured our sport now we've actually shortened our races our races used to be two hours and a little bit less technical with longer laps uh, which made it a little bit less exciting but I think the new format that they have now with the big drops and the rocks mm. and you know the short steep climbs have made it really exciting and have also made that the racing is very close as you saw on Sunday um and yeah, I'm just grateful that, you know, we got the opportunity to get onto a world stage like the Olympics. And I think that's what's great about the Olympics is it gives sports that they don't necessarily usually get the attention, some limelight, and it might actually uh, inspire more people to take up the sport or, or take an interest in it. There was, a, there was a big surge in popularity. I know a couple of friends of mine at Supersport, uh, Tex and, uh, and, and, and some of his mates, all invested in uh, in mountain bikes and uh, and got involved in that. They said it was very addictive. I mean, once they got involved, uh, they just uh, they couldn't stop. And I think some of them still do the stuff as well. So as long as you've got somewhere you can do it, uh, it's it's thorough. It looks it sounds like it's thoroughly enjoyable. So uh, is there still such a is there still such a popular like pastime or uh, not necessarily a competitive sport in South Africa, but a pastime for a lot of people? Yes, for sure. You know, the huge benefit we've got in our country is that um, there's not a lot of land restrictions where you can't ride. So in most towns or cities around the country, there's great mountain bike routes. And um, South Africans love to participate in sport. They like to be part of the act. And so, we, you know, there's been a huge surge in what we call marathon biking, where you have the more long distance stuff, which is more of a challenge um, physically instead of, you know, serious technical downhills where guys might crash and get hurt. Mm. You know, everyone can go out on a weekend and enjoy a, a long marathon type event where it's more on sort of gravel roads and jeep tracks. And I think the pinnacle of that has sort of been the Cape Epic. And I think that's yeah. brought this sport into South Africa to what it is. Um, you know, anyone can sort of within a year's training or two years ra- training take up the challenge of doing the Epic. Um, and that's sort of the comrades of mountain biking. And it's I, I think it's been a great new challenge to South Africans. and. It's a it's a great social sport, so it's a cool way to interact and keep fit at the same time. All right, let's talk about your race and uh, and obviously, I mean, when when I switched on, I think you had just hauled your way back from what I thought was 16th, but Knox told me you actually ended up st- in the starting lap in 19th place. Um, let's talk about that first of all. Uh, w- w- what went down there? Yeah, the the beginning was really disappointing for me. I just didn't get off the line. It's it's definitely not my strength but I haven't had starts that bad this whole season and it wasn't the race where you wanted to do it the course um, really wasn't geared to, to doing a lot of passing so yeah. I really had to work hard in that first or two laps doing a lot of big sprint efforts to actually get past riders you know it's not like they just let you by um, so by the time I caught the leaders I put in a huge effort and I figured you know I was I was already on a pace uh, that was my maximum and I would I would try and carry on and try and rattle the guys a bit up front and I, I went straight to the front and, mm. and put in a few attacks um, but as I suspected the guys in front were riding within themselves and saving a little bit for the end and yeah basically when those last two laps came and the real attacks came I just came up short by a few seconds I recovered again towards the end but uh, yeah it's the Olympic Games and everything everything has to go perfect and I just didn't have a good enough start 
Yeah, and when you did haul them in as well, I think there were one or two little moments where, uh, I think Phil Leggett put it that way, he says, look, you know, this, uh, this might be uh, inexperienced compared to some of the other guys in the race. Uh, and it wasn't on the on the stones going down some of those steep uh, embankments, but I think he had a little bit of a, a wobble on the stones trying to go uphill. Where you uh, one of the guys carried their bike over there, uh, you tried to ride a pedal over them, and uh, you got stuck a little bit, and that also set you back. We had to catch up again. Yeah, you know that's mountain biking, though. You know, in terms of of up that rock section, I, you know that happens, and everyone has a moment like that in the race where they lose momentum or ride in front of them stops so, or. You know, I wouldn't say that was a defining moment. I, I managed to get back on quite easily. Mm. Usually what happens after someone makes a mistake like that, especially if it's one of the front guys, they will set up and just allow everyone back on. It's a sort of a fair rule of play. Um, and we all did get back on. And like I said, I just burned too much energy uh, in the beginning. I think that is where the race or the medals were lost for me. Um, and that's definitely something I need to go back to the drawing board and and work on I feel like the rest of the race I was in good shape and had I had a bit more energy left for the end it could have been a different result mm. listening to the commentators before the race Barry they were saying that the the course that you guys the, the track that was laid out there was very very fast and treacherous in certain places uh, did you find it particularly quick? yeah it's a little bit faster usually um, we'd have more slow technical slippery sections you know in forests and that sort of, sort of thing um, but the whole idea behind the Olympics is trying to showcase the sport and for that mm. reason they built it on a hillside where the spectators could see most of the course um, but you know mountain biking you can't define in a sense of that's what a track should be mountain biking all around the world is different so you, you race on different courses every week all around the world so this was just one that was a little bit faster um, but at the end of the day you know the top 10 riders in the world were pretty much all at the front so um, it was a well-balanced course, and in the end, I think it, they they did a great job in building that track. Um, Barry, Kate here. Uh, South Africa President um, Gideon Sam has come out and said that a couple of medals were left behind by Team South Africa. I know you were one of the medal contenders. Um, how do you respond to such a comment? Do you uh, feel it directly to people like you, or do you just feel like, you know what, I, I did my best, and therefore I'll do better next time? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I... You know, just for myself, I definitely feel like, you know, with that bad start, I lost out on a medal. Mm. Um, and my absolute goal to go to the Olympics was to get a medal. So in terms of that, fifth was a failure, um, in my opinion. So I'm not 100% happy with that. Um, but I have to learn from that and, and go forward. And, you know, at the end of the day, I did give my best. And that's all I could do on the day. It, it just wasn't good enough. And I just have to make sure that in four years' time, I've, I've fixed the problems uh, from this race. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, you go in there even stronger, you know. Um, I feel all the athletes that go to the Olympics uh, give 100%. And, um, yeah, I think there's, there, there was a few of us that might be a little bit disappointed that learnt a lot of these games. And what I always say is, is don't be disappointed. Just use it to uh, better yourself in the future. Yeah, I mean, you say, uh, you know, it might be viewed as a failure. And whatever people say after when you guys came back, I don't see that race uh, that you put in there as a failure at all. I think you just need to hear... I think what Phil Leggett had to say at the end of the race, mm -hmm. I think he was more impressed with your performance than any other competitor, including the top three. You know, the way that you kept, that you came back from, uh, from that bad start, it happens to people. But from what you did from that moment onwards, and I was saying when I came in on Monday, you know, if it hadn't been for that start, you would have walked that race. You would have absolutely walked that race. So, yeah, I mean, like I that said, was an unbelievable performance. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, in future, I know if I can, if I fix and rectify that problem, um, I have the experience and I have the willpower to dig deep and, and to pull off a race like that. So, I'm still young. I'm still, you know, 24 years old. So, mm. hopefully, a few more Olympics and, you know, a couple of world championships in between which will be something that I'll work really hard towards. And, yeah, all you can do is, is give it your 100%. Absolutely. As I say, awesome. Out of the, all the performance at the Olympics with Chad and Cameron, uh, your performance ranked in my top three. And there was no medal in it for you, but it was still one of, uh, one of my top three performances. So having not been a, a massive mountain bike fan beforehand, you've made me one now and a <laughs> Burry Stunder fan as well. So I'll be look, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking, yeah, forward, looking forward to Rio as well, because uh, as I say, I think, I think you'll walk, walk a gold medal there. Simon, for a final one for Barry? Yeah, there's been a lot of chat now, now that you guys are back here, about looking ahead four years' time and, and the structures that need to be in place and the support that needs to be given to the athletes. Do you, 
what, what do is you this? want? Yeah, what do you what want? Do you need, what buddy? do you need? Yeah. Yeah, I feel actually, you know, Saskot, um a few years ago approached me and, you know, after the last games and, um, you know, fortunately enough for me, mountain biking is a professional sport. So we do have sponsors and we race on a, a circuit in Europe. So, you know, in terms of that, I think Saskot can really spend money in, in other sports. You know, for instance, the rowers, I think they have, they punched hugely above their weight and mm. it's a sport for them where Olympics is everything. And, um, you know, I'd like to see Saskot invest a lot of money into those guys I mean they've obviously showed they've, they've got the talent um, and then in terms of mountain biking I always say you know Olympic champions need to be bred in school in school level already you know at the moment they're choosing out of elite level riders that have already almost reached their potential where you actually want to have 500 young kids riding mountain bike, bike to the best of their ability but by the time they get to Olympic level um, they have 500 kids to choose from and not five yeah. Um, so I definitely like to see Saskatchewan invest, you know, investing right from the bottom, grassroots level. So maybe not even t- 2016, but 2020. I think if we look at the UK and what they've done, um, that's the exact program that they should mimic. And I mean, they take kids on um, from the age of 14 or 15 and put them into these high performance programs where they learn from the professionals and the professionals can, can um, you know, put their skills to good use from into those kids from a young age. Yeah. Uh, did you uh, did you get a chance to meet or chat to um, the uh, what's it Adrian uh, Neon Shuti, uh, the Rwandan, who is such a, a a a cool Olympic story about you know his whole history and and how he ended up competing in that race with you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we actually compete with Adrian all the time in South Africa. He's okay. on the South African uh, MTN team, and um, yeah, I mean. He's, he's come a, such a long way from when I remember racing against him the first few times a few years ago and you know his, his level has actually come up so good he's actually a marathon rider to where, you know so he's more uh, fitness where fitness is a bigger strength and that is his biggest strength so in the South African marathon he's really a, a big contender and he's given me a run for my money a few times mm. and uh, to see him at the Olympics and him bettering himself to the point where he's racing with the best riders in the world after you know hearing the, his story and yeah. the hardships he's faced in his life is just yeah incre- it's, it's so great to be able to stand on a start line with a guy like that i think that was one of that was the uh, that was the eric the eel or eddie the eagle story of the olympic games uh adrian yonshuti losing his family in the rwandan genocide in 1994 lost most of his family in that genocide and competed at the Olympic Games thanks to uh, help from uh, from uh, the mountain biking family around the world, and uh, as uh, Barry said, also competes here in South Africa, which uh, which I didn't know. So that's uh, that's cool to know. Barry, once again, congrats, bud. You did an awesome job. Uh, job. Uh, yeah, um, I was really pulling for you to get a medal, but there is a, there is one coming at the, at the next games, and uh, we'll be following your progress cl- closely in the next four years up until Rio. Thanks a lot, guys. I really all, uh, appreciate all the support, and I'd also just like to say to everyone in South Africa who watched the race and might have got inspired to, to take up mountain biking I just like to you know sort of push that home and, and tell them to get out there and do it it's it's, it's yeah um, a great sport to get involved in and uh, to the youngsters out there um, it's a great sport to do you know if, you, if you're not too fond of team sports it might be something that uh, you can sort of specialize in and find your niche and so yeah Cool. Yeah, thanks to everybody. Simon, there we go. Get a mountain bike because you're not a team player. <laughs> so I'm going to get a mountain uh, bike. Don't listen to them, Barry. But I'd, <laughs> I'd love to come and do an off road with you. There we go. Yeah, that'd be great. Anytime. You, you can laugh at me. It'll be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Barry. All the best and welcome home again. Enjoy your uh, your break after the Olympics. Cheers, Barry. Thanks, guys. Cheers, Cheers Barry. Bye bye. There we go. Barry Stunder. Ladies, he is. He's one of my new. It's, it's nice to have somebody from a different sport that you can actually follow and he's like one of my new uh, favorite sports people i just i just thoroughly enjoyed watching that race I just oh it here was we such go. a good performance here we go here's another man crush <laughs> he, kept, he kept coming back every time they thought no he's back he kept coming uh, back and back and that to me is the epitome of a champion no that's cool that was really cool and he explained that's it there it was having to haul his way in from six 19th place to get uh, to the top five bunch kind of took away his uh, his finishing punch <laughs> we the best on three one two three we, we the best, best. Fridays live on balls.co.za. Balls.co.za.